Hey guys, Monday, April 30th. We're in the geothermal greenhouse looking at one of the vents where the Zephyr fan is blowing out cold air. Now, there's a, over 100 foot of tube connected to this fan. And it's sucking in the hot water or the hot air from the peak up here. And then it goes down and 100 feet through the greenhouse comes out here for a little air conditioning. It's running a little bit. It's extremely cloudy with high winds. And we've got excavators out front putting in the ponds and the permaculture waterways. You can see the first tiny house being built. And some glads coming up. Let's get back to the greenhouse. Tomatoes are in. Low temperature in here is around upper 30s. Now, when you put in a greenhouse and you have all this biodiversity, you use biodiversity in an interplantings for a number of reasons. You plant peas between your radishes to fertilize the soil and also to get peas and radishes. But at some point, when you put your uh, all your plants in, you're going to have a an insect bloom, a pest bloom. It usually takes four to eight weeks or less if you're in a really warm, hot area. And we just had the pe first pest bloom. Got some white kale, some Anasazi beans coming up. We have 15 varieties of peppers in here. They're everywhere. You look, it's a different kind of pepper. Some pak choy, another pepper, pak choy. These are daikon radish, huge radishes. So, and then we have rainbow carrots in between. These are all sunflowers coming up. Field of garlic and cylindra beets. Appears to be some kind of squash. Some sage. Some interesting uh, tiny varieties of tomatoes that we're going to try to perpetuate here. Another bunch of peppers. Some rue. And I installed this banging uh, shelf, and there's going to be more just like it. I designed these over a year ago. They take seconds to build. Just wood slats treated with uh, a non-toxic oil, like tongue oil or whatever you want. And they just last forever. This thing's three years old. It was laying outside for a year, and now I just brought it in, hung it up with some wire. It's got five flats on it, so it's no joke. Take a look. Let me hold some weight. Just got in some more peppers and tomato varieties in the back here, so they can go up 10 feet all the way up here by the window. But let's get on with the past. So this Achrosa plum, which also has some sunflower and a really nice market spinach and some flowering broccoli rob, which I highly suggest you grow just for fun and just for the flower. The flowers are delicious. Right before they go to seed, you can eat the, mm, eat the tops. You can have it halfway and steam it. I right, can just do it my way. And eat the flowers because they're delicious. Mm. All right. Mosquito plant, thyme, some Asian mustards coming up there with some broccoli rob flowers in our blueberry area. But here you can see there's a, a pest on our plum pretty infested up top here it's a red aphid which I would expect to find aphids first and we have red aphids on the plum and we have an ant colony that got in here and now they're moving up and down the trunk which is good so I'm gonna leave them because they eat red aphids but what I wanted to show you is a non-toxic insecticide you should all have for your organic gardening let me just show you the other pest here on this uh, Russian kale here we've got green aphids so we've got the green aphid and the red aphid here which is pretty uh, low level infestation it's only on this one kale which someone gave me bastards and they're only on that tree they may spread but we have ladybugs already in here and I purchased some more so we're gonna be uh, introducing ladybugs in here uh, shortly but let me just show you the spray we use here at the ranch and it, you must use 
Dr. Bronner's Pure Castile Peppermint. That's the only one you can use. And this has nutrients, so this works as a foliar nutrient for your plants. The pine oil is actually beneficial for all the plants. So you can just lightly mist your plants once a week if you want with this product. And I here I have a one gallon Scott sprayer. And I bet you it's not open, it's not. But you're just gonna use like maybe one catful to this one gallon, that's it. And you're gonna thoroughly cut your plants completely with the, with the mixture. Um, if you miss any spots, you could leave some of the pest. So I'm just gonna just give it a little double squirt, maybe two tablespoons, and then I'm done. I have a, now you can add two more amendments to this, which I highly recommend if you do, if you would like. If you have a major problem, I don't have a major problem. So I'm just going uh, small scale here. Straight Dr. Bronner's foliar spray has nutritional value and it easily rinses off and I have a clean product. So I've just got a couple, let me shake that up, pressurize it and spray it away. Um, so the two other amendments you can add to this um, are hydrogen peroxide or a little bit of isopropyl alcohol as well. And that'll help the product evaporate off of your uh, plants, desiccating and killing um, your little critters a little a little faster Okay, so that's the heads up there and here's the greenhouse update We got a lot of good rhubarbs coming in um, Our raspberries are popping thanks to uh, the subscribers that came out and visited us about a month ago um, It's looking very green and healthy and we're uh, even with the pests. I'm very happy with the success we're showing right now Tonight I'm going to have, be having an uh, arugula salad here. This rocket arugula is huge. It's almost 10 inches in some spots. And it's intergrowing with garlics. So I'm going to shave some of this back and make a nice salad tonight. Maybe with some of the baby uh, collard greens. And these radish should be done uh, any day now. Let me see if we got a nice one poking through. <laughs> Nice watermelon radish. I can get a couple radishes maybe in my salad. So food is free if you grow it, guys. And if you rotate it correctly, you can constantly be abundance, taking out the radishes. These peas are going to get more light, and they're going to grow up real quick. Um, and on and on. It's endless. So far, I have enough food in here to be feeding about three people starting now. And then it's going to quickly rocket to uh, enough to feed seven to ten people. But right now we have enough food. We could be living morning, noon, and night on spinach salads, white kale salad, sautéed kale. The daikons will be, uh, they'll probably be 25 pounds of root vegetable just in this little area, two, six square feet. So when we harvest the daikon in seven weeks, um, you're going to be impressed. These uh, beets are going to come out in just about uh, four to six weeks. And we'll be monitoring them. So, guys, thanks for watching. I just recently split up some bee balm. Will be this is a killer at the farmers market. Excellent herb for you to have, um, and it's inexpensive. If you get a five dollar bee balm, put it in a big pot, grow it for a year. You can split it up eight times. I'm gonna sell each of these for ten bucks in about a month. And that's boom. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people and be safe.